Oh, I am excited about this next interview. I think I've been waiting, I don't know, months now to be able to talk to you about this. Sarah Jen Ho, who is the author of Mind Your Manners, a brand new book, How to Be Your Best Self in Any Situation, etiquette expert, and also host of her own Netflix show, Mind Your Manners. It is so good to see you. Mind Your Manners is out now. Hi there. Thank you, Tams, and I'm so excited to you know be here with you. We've both been writing our books in tandem, yes. And finally, you know, mine is putting to, being put together, and just thank you for having me. Well, I'm so excited. So, mind your manners. I, I feel like it says everything. I feel like I've been hearing this phrase my whole life because that's what we're always told. And um, the fact that you have a book about it, but into adulthood is what I love about this. Uh, I, I'm a big fan of the show, big fan of you. I think you know that. But I'm excited for other people to see your message out there, especially when it comes to so many things that we're still tackling as adults. I mean, we were told mind your manners when we were young, but we need to do the same thing now. Is that why you wrote this? Well, you know, I think that now more than ever, we need manners. And so I guess there are two things at play. Firstly, coming out of the epidemic, everybody's social skills are a little bit rusty. So we're all a little bit anxious about putting ourselves out there again. And another thing is that every day when I open the newspaper, I'm reading an, about a fresh story of epic rudeness, violence mm -hmm. even. And it feels like it feels like our statesmen aren't even acting like statesmen anymore. So I, I feel that there's something fundamentally broken with our system. And maybe, you know, it needs to hit rock bottom for us to to turn back to etiquette again. And you see this trend now where uh, a, a lot of newspaper outlets, I mean, even Vogue magazine has come out with an etiquette column called Oh Behave. And mm -hmm. Vogue magazine and Curbed came out with a spread last year that I absolutely loved. Uh, and I, so I think it's quite timely. So I have a question for you. When you look around, you, know, you and I have been together in restaurants before. We've we've met up here in New York City. When you look around, I guess, or even at me, I don't know, and you see how somebody is sitting or somebody is eating or talking, do you think, oh, gosh, there's so much I could do to help this person? Well, all right. So I have to admit, I mean, I actually, I turn it off. So unless somebody asks okay. me or pays me, uh, I, 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 <laughs> I love you. Off, but... <laughs> I do have some pet peeves. Just the other day, I was on a flight from Hong Kong to Shanghai. And whenever okay. I see a nail clipping in in public <laughs> and in closed spaces, it really drives me nuts. And I kept turning to the guy who was totally oblivious, his own little world, clipping his nails. But that sound, and I was trying to like sort of catch his eye to let him know I was judging him. <laughs> but he just never looked Appalled. at me. So yeah. <laughs> So there are, but, but I'm not an etiquette expert, and I know that. I mean, that just grosses me out. I can't imagine what it did to you. <laughs> that's a, that's that's a pet peeve for all of us. Um, you know, I I asked you before we jumped on. You know, is there something in particular that we could talk about? You know, and I I guess I think more and more as I as I look around and as we get older and as we you know head into these d different stages of our lives, right? Relationships and friendships, you know, they become very important and very pivotal, but they definitely change, I think, over time. And so I was curious because it is one of the the, the chapters that, you know, you, you thought it was important enough to make it as, you know, an entire chapter talking about dating and relationships and social life and friendship as, as the first part. And, and I find that, um, I, I don't know, I was excited about that because I, I agree with you. I think that those are very important things that we have to pay attention to. So talk a little bit about that and how you have to mind your manners in those kind of relationships, starting with friendships. Yeah, you know, it, it's funny with friendships because it, there's a wide range of a friend, right? There could be somebody who you met yeah. a couple of times and you have the number, but you get along with very well. And then on the other side, somebody you grew up with as a child. Right. So, I mean, there's a very wide range of friends. And and so therefore, there's many different types of because of the variety of relationships, it's actually more difficult to get it right along you know, mm. each level. And there is a lot of advice out there for love and relationships. Right. So what do you do when you break up in a really in, in, in a love relationship? But actually, what do you do when 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 you when a friend drops you or you drop a friend? I mean, friend breakups 
can be equally can equally hurt you to the core. Yeah. So I felt that the first step of etiquette is really social, because I often say that etiquette is actually it's about put have letting people putting other people around you at ease. And when you and and I think of myself because by the age of fourteen I had lived in a lot of different countries. I lived in Papua New Guinea, the UK. Uh, I lived in the city of, city of Hong Kong, and I lived in Exeter, New Hampshire, where I was going for boarding school. You know, in wow. very East Coast preppy. By the age of fourteen, so I always say that I see myself as a microcultural anthropologist, and our life is made of up of multiple microcultures every day. You know, whether it's family, work, different sets of friends. Even actually at, at the office, different departments could be different microcultures. And the first time I meet somebody new or I'm with a new group, I'm thinking, what are the codes of conduct here? How are people behaving? How are they speaking? What is the slang they're using? What is the tone of voice they're using? How are they dressed? And then subconsciously, I'm sort of adopting these and adjusting self, not losing myself, but I'm adjusting myself to let other people, those people feel comfortable around me, which in turn will make me feel comfortable Around them, and that is really the the joy of social fluency and inclusion is what makes us human. Oh, it's so true. It's and it's so true that we do that depending on the the situation. You know, you talk about um, friendships and and breakups, or maybe not even a breakup. Maybe it's just like no longer you know, part of your world right now, or you've grown apart in so many different ways, depending on, it could be age, it could have to do with the relationship you're in currently, it could have to do with wh whatever it has to do with your interests. Um, what do you do with that? Because I think that's one of the biggest questions that I get about having how to do that right so you feel good about it too. So the other person feels okay, but that you feel good about it yourself and you step away or step aside from a friendship. Yeah, well, th there's different ways of stepping aside from a friendship. There's ones that you just talked about where you grow apart. Maybe you live in different cities, right? You're in very different industries or you're at very different stages of your lives. And th there's no need to really call that out because let's say if it's somebody you've known for very long, if you see them again, you may just pick up where you left off. But it's just that your paths, your paths don't overlap right now. Um, but then there's the intentional one, which is where maybe maybe a friend is is not respecting your boundaries. May, so it's not a healthy friendship. Maybe you, right? So, so for various reasons, you actively do not want to be friends with them anymore. And I talk about this in the book where, you know, I mean, we've all been dropped by a friend. We've all dropped friends. And, mm -hmm. and, and, and you have to think about, okay, is this something that I think I can change? Is something I can confront? And that, you know, they, they can, that, is it something that's within their control to change? If it's their personality or if it's just so toxic that it's not it's not even worth doing then i would quietly and, and, and we have a chinese proverb for this whereas you raise the reins and you ride your separate ways uh, and you just sort of do it smoothly quietly you give work as an excuse uh you and and you maybe you space out your meeting so instead of every week it's once a month once a quarter and then once a year and in a chinese phrase we say it's hao lai hao chu good come, good go. It's always important how you leave things. So maybe yes. this relationship, this friendship is not right for you anymore, but, but it served you something. And to have gratitude for it, even though it no longer serves you anymore. Uh, and, and to make sure that you're on, that there's positive energy, even when you leave. I, I love that because I, I think that people think it has to be this volatile, you know, conversation to to pull pull apart and everyone has to be clear of their boundaries and where it's going. And I, I don't know that it has to work like that. You know, I don't I don't know that you have to hurt someone's feelings or make something so abrupt that everyone's so clear of the situation so you can rest easy at night. Because I don't necessarily know you do when you when you leave a situation like that. Exactly. And you know what? There's always a lot of debate around this because some people say, Oh, you have to, you have sure. to say word for word. You have to make it black or white. Yeah. You have to say everything you're thinking, but I'm, I'm, I'm more on your, your realm where that you don't always need to say a hundred percent, right? Like in some ways that's also everything you're thinking. Yeah. <laughs> everything you're thinking, you know, you talk about being your best self in any situation. And I, and I think you're right. Like after the pandemic, we had to get back out there and relearn how to 
you know, socialize, to work together, to work in a hybrid environment, to have relationships. I mean, we were, you know, having even dating and having relationships in just a, in a very, very different way. What is, is there a, a number one question that you feel like you're asked more and more these days as an etiquette expert that people really want some help with, that they, they know they fall short and they want some help? In, in the social category or in the dating category? Either, either or both. I'm, cu- I'm curious. I'm, I'm curious probably more about dating, but I'd like to hear about the social. Yeah. Well, um, oh gosh, I mean, there's so many questions that I field every day. I would say for social, most of the conversations are around conversation skills. So mm. it's, uh, so it's knowing, for example, how to, how to set a boundary or how to do something without offending people often think that etiquette is one big no. They think, oh, is etiquette all about limiting yourself? You can't say what you think. You can't say what you feel because you're going to offend the other person. Actually, no. To me, etiquette is very empowering. It's one big do. It lets you go and form the relationships you want to form. It lets you set the boundaries that you want to set without offending because it's all about your delivery and your tone. And so oftentimes what people ask is, how if I'm with another person, how do I end a conversation? Let's say I need to go and they they keep on talking. How do I end the conversation without it seeming rude? Right. Or um, how do I leave somebody when I'm getting. How do you do that? Right. So. Oh, so that's a that's a fun one. Um, if it's just you and another person and you need to leave, let's say if you're you could either just be alone or you could be at a party. Right. So if you're at a party, you want to leave somebody the best thing to do to make it seamless is to introduce them to somebody else. So I would say, Oh, have you met Brian over there? You you should really meet Brian. And you obviously have to play up Brian a little bit. He's so smart. He like, you know, does this, he just achieved that. And you two would really get along. And then you bring them over, introduce them to Brian, and then you can leave. And it's, it's better because then, then just leaving because you're, the point is you're not leaving. You don't want to leave that person alone. Right. You want to make sure that mm-hmm. person still has company. So whether it's you or whether it's Brian, you know, it d- doesn't really matter. And you push it off to Brian. I love it. Now, I love it. Poor Brian, but yay, right? That makes <laughs> a total sense. Oh, and, and to Brian, you just made a new <laughs> friend. You, you just did Brian a service too. Everybody. Right, exactly. Right. They come to these events because they want to meet new people. Now, it could be that it's just you and this other person and you're, you're not at a party. Maybe you're at a coffee or, or in a meeting. Yep. And you, and you really just have to say, oh gosh, I like to kind of look surprised. Look at the time, like time really flies. I just realized, you know, I have a call or I have a call at four o'clock. Um, you know, where I wish I could, I wish I could spend longer with you, but we'll really have to do this again sometime. Right. Or you push, Done. nudge the other person into the, I always say every conversation, every meeting has stages. It's kind of like a treadmill. There's the warm up stage and then there's a the climax, right. Which is yes. the bulk of your meeting. And then there's the cool down. So you have to nudge the other person to cool down, for example, say, really good. Oh, what else do you have planned for today? Or, oh, you know, I like to say, oh, I have to head out, but should we walk and talk for a little bit? Right. And then at least you can pretend like, you're, you know, you can walk, let's say, to the subway or to get your car, uh, but still talk. And therefore, it's not that abrupt. I think that's great. I feel like I'm going to take some t- take some more of these secrets <laughs> for the rest of this week. Um, okay. Now let's go into dating real fast. How do you, how do you deal with that? Because I think that breakup, I was actually speaking with a friend of mine today and she said, I, I don't know what's going on with this person. I can't get a, a grasp it. But I think that communication is a little bit different as you get older and people are doing their own thing and they've got their independent lives. And I don't think that maybe it's, it's a little murkier, right? Than maybe dating when you're, when you're younger. So what do you do with those situations? I guess if you want to leave or you want kind of a clarity of what that relationship is between the two people. Yeah. You know, when, in my younger days, I, when I just started dating, I didn't have the confidence to express what I wanted. And so I would always be more passive and let the other person lead. Yeah. But that was because it was my problem because it was, I, I didn't know what I wanted. And so I would be dating wrong people or getting in the wrong relationships. And as I built confidence in, read a lot of relationship books, uh, went through therapy, which was the best investment I ever did on myself in myself. 
I I gained the confidence to be like, okay, I know what this relationship is for and I know what I want out of it and I'm not afraid to say it. So if it's something that's just short-term fun, because let's say later on I had plans, other life plans, I wanted to go to business school, I knew I wanted to go to business single, so this relationship was just for right now, I would express it. If let's say I was looking for someone, mm-hmm. a life partner, right? I was in my mid-30s at that point and I found my husband. I was very upfront. You know, I, I, I with men that I met, I would say, I'm not looking for something casual. Uh, I'm I'm looking for something serious and and putting it out there. And I think it's so important. Yeah, I believe a lot in manifestation. And so I'm always manifesting, mm-hmm. thinking like, okay, what Me do too. I want? What what's next? Um, you know, how do I envisage envisage my life going? And I think it's important to also bring that into a relationship. So the the worst thing you can do in the love relationship, if you want to be serious, is to not make that is to not express that. And you know what? If the other person breaks up with you because of that he's that person saved you time could i I always say what is the worst thing that could happen that you're just going to know the truth a little bit earlier than you would have down the line because i i really do believe that you know those those things are going to work out the way they're going to work out and i often find that uh people want to almost extend (laughs) extend the hurt a little bit or extend the inevitable a little bit so i I know that you and i have connected on a lot of different fronts uh we've known each other i guess almost a year now and and i i do i know we've had a just a few but just really good conversations about these things but i think they're important to share with people because it can really get you very very confused and we are all dealing with a lot of the same situations in life which is why i appreciate what you're doing so much Thank you, Tamsin. And I think, you know, I mean, we're both Sagittariuses. We're both very stereotypical Sagittariuses. Yes. <laughs> and I think we are. And we're always looking to learn and improve ourselves. And we Sagittarius often make mistakes. Uh, and, and, and that's OK. But that's, you know, what makes us stronger. Absolutely. I mean, full disclosure to everybody, we decided we were going to do this uh, interview, I don't know, two hours ago. Less. <laughs> and made years. it happen. So le- was it less? <laughs> OK. Uh, Well, I'm so excited for you one more time and we'll make sure there are links all over the place, but mind your manners. Uh, Sarah, I'm so so happy for you. I really, really am. How to be your best self in any situation. And um, I know this is going to be amazing. We're going to see you everywhere. I know you're on Drew Barrymore uh, quite often, so I'll be looking forward uh, to seeing you back here in New York again soon. Thank you so much, Tabson.